Hi, I'm Keith Gosland. I'm Linda Quinlan. I'm Ann Charles. It's Tuesday, February 23rd. Welcome to All Things LGBTQ. Before we start, I'd like to remind us that remind you that we are taping in Montpelier, Vermont, which is unceded indigenous land. So now let's go to some headlines with Keith. Why, why thank you. And we're going to start with trivia. And February has been Black History Month. And I saw this quote from NCL, which is the National Center for Lesbian Rights. We stand on the shoulders of giants and have many examples of what it means to be the first, but not the last people who open doors and pave the way. Following in their footsteps, we don't have to do everything. We just have to do our part and move the needle forward. This month, as we celebrate the contributions and achievements of black people, it is important that we not only honor this history, but also allow it to inform how we make a better future. So now the two trivia questions, and it's a two-parter. The first, he brought us into the black experience by inviting us in and engaging us with revelations and cry. She named it Afro-American and defined the hierarchies of oppression. She was a revolutionary who challenged us with these words. I write for those women who do not speak, for those who do not have a voice because they were so terrified because we were taught to respect fear more than ourselves. We've been taught that silence would save us, but it won't. So now a few events. This is the last time I'm going to be plugging the statewide town hall forums. Coming up on March 2nd is the final, and it's the statewide caucus, where we will look at everything that's been discussed in the previous forums and look at if we were to move together as a community, what would be our priorities? And as Zach will be putting up the poster, you can still register for this. <coughs> Please be looking for the virtual events on the Pride Center's site, Out in the Open, and Queer Connect site. Mm -hmm. Now remember, Queer Connect now has two different locales, one in Bennington, one in Rutland. And now, before Anne takes us to far and distant places, I'm going to take you to Canada. <laughs> and new LGBTQ <coughs> society gets off the ground in Iqualit. And I had to spell that out phonetically. And if that's new to you, was to me as well, it is in New <coughs> Navut used to be the Northwest Territories. This is almost as far north as you can get and not be in the Arctic Circle. When I went online to find out a little bit more about the community, you can only reach it by boat during good season. And what is that, two weeks? <laughs> yeah, it could be. <laughs> but <coughs> Positive Space Nunavut got $100,000 from the Women and Gender Equity Funding Source to develop culturally relevant resources, create inclusive spaces, and create jobs for the you know, sexually and gender diverse members of the community. When was the last time we saw something like that yeah, here? Really. And this actually started out as a high school club they started getting increased requests for, can you please come talk to us about the culture, LGBTQ+, what is it that we need to know, how do we support it, and that's what grew into this funding opportunity. And they're hoping that their first endeavor is to create a youth community center. Mm. So that would be really good. Boston Pride, they're ha they're, they've been having a little trouble you know, with inclusion and diversity and looking at the members of their board and corporate sponsors and how they make decisions. And they've now decided that the festival and parade 
is postponed Ooh. and it may not be until the fall because of COVID and that Massachusetts needs to be at a stage for recovery from COVID to have a public event. But they are looking at continuing to do things virtually mm. in June. So we'll see what happens and we'll definitely be following <coughs> it. New Hampshire. And this is something we're definitely going to keep an eye on. H. Bill 68. One of their Republican representatives has introduced a bill that would classify gender affirmation processes for youth as child abuse oh. and subject the practitioners to criminal penalties. As I said, we will definitely be following that. And in Massachusetts, if I can find the site really quickly, they just appointed Representative Kate Hogan as the House Pro Tem. Hmm. You know, person who helps direct things moving around. While the, what makes this significant, she will now be the highest ranking LGBTQ member of the Massachusetts House in Massachusetts history. Good. All right. Yeah. And as I was coming up, this just in coming out of the people doing work in Washington, D.C., and as Linda will be talking about the Equality Act, Susan Collins, remember her? That senator from Maine? And we voted her, and they voted her again. Didn't they just? She's refusing to sign back on as a co-sponsor, saying that it doesn't include the language and revisions she wanted but she won't say what they were. Co-sponsor of the Equality Act? The yeah. Equality Act. Yeah. And she, she was a critical Republican co-sponsor in the Senate where they're going to need to get 60 votes to pass this. And people are theorizing that she really wants the same religious exemptions that Mick Romney is saying that mm -hmm. he wants. He won't do it unless it's in there. Un unless yeah. it's in there. Yeah. <coughs> and... From what people are saying, they, the types of revisions, amendments he wants would basically get the bill. Mm -hmm. You know, all you would have to do is say, you know, this is counter to my religious beliefs and we're mm -hmm. back before the U.S. Supreme Court. And finally, a acknowledgement, and, and Linda got this, you know, people are looking for books to read in the era of COVID. This is from Badger Bliss Books which is an independent house mm -hmm. in Vermont. Yes. Run by lesbians. Karen Badger. What man could you ask for? I, and what she is promoting is that the books that she has, and she has several of her own. She has won multiple awards, particularly for her youth novels. But she has comedy, romance, historical, science fiction, drama, speculative, time travel, occult, paranoia, interracial, young adult, action adventure, and older and gay trans characters. Hmm. Hmm. So, no poetry. She's waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> so with that. All right. Well, Puerto Rico. Issues an LGBTQ emergency declaration amid violence. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Locals protest a Rush Limbaugh tribute on a historic gay friendly theater. We'll talk about that. The Equality Act is reintroduced in the U.S. House. The vote will be in the next few weeks. We'll have more on that. And one of our favorite people, QAnon. GOP representative from Georgia, Marjorie Taylor Greene, <laughs> says the LGBT Equality Act is disgusting. It destroys women's rights, religious rights, and the rights of the unborn child. It is a direct attack on God's creation. So, I thought we were merely redecorating, but <laughs> yeah, you know. COVID claims HIV Dr. David Katzenstein 
who saved innumerable, innumerable lives. He was one of the first American doctors to focus his efforts on saving HIV-positive Africans. He was 69 and died in his adopted home of Zimbabwe. Utah governor opposes the anti-trans sports bill and asks for a better way. Republican Governor Spencer Scott says meeting with trans kids changes your heart in important ways. Utah is advancing legislation that would bar trans women athletes from playing in girls and women's sports. Scott says he won't sign it in its current version. So that's Didn't good. Didn't he start crying? He started he crying, yeah. Um, very touching from a Republican. Good news out of Utah. Really? Maybe to counterbalance Mitt Romney. Gay Maybe he could talk to Mitt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, really. No kidding. Gay Representative Malcolm Kangada is running for U.S. Senate, Senator. He would be the first black gay man running for the U.S. Senate. He made the announcement on the readout show on MSNBC. The seat of Senator Pat Toomey, a Republican, is opening up as Toomey will not be running again. Two other Democrats have declared, John Fetterman and John McGugan. So, this is um, Pennsylvania. Huh? This is Pennsylvania. Yeah, I like John Fetterman too, um, from I what like I've Kenyatta seen of him. Also. Yeah, yeah. That's a really long distance absentee ballot. <laughs> Nevada ends its policy of segregation and isolating HIV positive inmates. That's good. And then um, RuPaul and others mourn the pioneer gay musician Ari Gold. Gold died of cancer and he was only 47. Mm -hmm. Gold released 17 albums and landed a hit on dance charts in 2007 with Where the Music Takes You. And on another sad note, the LGBT community also mourns the death of Marriott, Marriott's CEO, Ari, Arnie Sorensen. He wielded his corporate power to advance, for, to add to advances for LGBTQ people. Under his leadership, the International Hospitality Company became a leader in supporting LGBTQ rights. He was an ally. He was an ally. Arizona representative calls non-binary people animals. Representative John Fillmore and Kevin Payne are facing ethic complaints for their remarks. Uh, they identified non-binary people as chickens. Bridgerton Queen says she is blessed to be a black gay actress on the hit show. Bridgerton, oh. Golda Rocheville, who portrays Queen Charlotte, said she is proud to be an out queer actress of color on a major television series. I haven't seen it yet. No, I've heard mixed reviews. Have you seen it? I've heard mixed reviews, but haven't seen it either. And on a few more things, homophobes are more likely to be stupid. Well, I maybe have more on that. <laughs> <laughs> Scientifically proven. Uh, yeah. Trans woman Shina Carrillo has died following a brutal attack in New Williams, is it Wil Wilmington, Pennsylvania. She was 24 years old. When officers arrived on the scene, the suspect was violently attacking her. When they ordered him to stop, he just kept beating her. Offers then fatally shot the attacker. Mitt Romney will oppose LGBTQ rights unless Christians get the right to discriminate. <laughs> that says it all. I know. Read out a festival of lesbian literature and lesbian voices, a free Zoom room event for authors in Read Out Festival. And uh, you can find more information about that on readoutfestival.worksite.com. And this was really interesting. Um, Yoko Ono reveals that John Lennon was bisexual. Mm. Really? Yes. I'm not surprised. So that was pretty interesting. 
Christian Lives Matter protesters tried to drown out gay variety show with hymns at St. Mary's Cathedral oh, in Portland, that. Oregon. I saw that. <laughs> Did you see that? Yeah. And they were all guys, you know? I mean, most of them were all these white men. And then I'm going to have more if we have time on bill design, bills designed to curtail the rights of transgender people have been filed in state houses across the country, including Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi, South Carolina, and Tennessee. Mm. So, and I think that's it for me for now. Yeah. Okay. Well, I have some headlines. Do you? Now, um, on to our sort of bleak international news. <laughs> Homophobic. <bleak> this week? <laughs> well, I'm, you know, try, activists are struggling. So that's an upside of some of this. Homophobic hate speech is on the rise in Europe, says a new study. Facebook blocks Australian LGBT pages in a news purge. And I don't know if you've been following this thing with Facebook in Australia. Yeah, but, a little bit. Um, it's a site of contestation. And one of the um, casualties, unfortunately, is LGBTQ news. Because, um, as was the case when I was talking about China last time, um, Facebook is a primary vehicle for a lot of people not only to get their news, but to disseminate LGBT news of interest to LGBT people and events. But what the fight is that Australia wants to start charging Facebook for um, its news, that it, you know, its news outlets, and Facebook is outraged by this, and but it's not really like a news outlet. It's people giving news, right? Well, there are um, a lot of people get their news. Like a third of the of us. But don't they get it from other people? Like, well, you know, all you all the articles people send around. Right, right, that's right. news from yep. outlets like the Washington Post right, and right. so forth. Yep, yep. So they want to start charging a nine percent tax. Wow. Well, it's, you know. It's not good. Well, Facebook's angry, and LGBT news is getting lost. Mm. Um, this is another unfortunate, unpleasant story. Um, national security and police shut down an LGBTQ office um, in a suburb of Accra, Ghana. And um, this was such exciting news. A group of people got together and um, opened it, and then the security forces raided it. Um, and the president, um, Nana Addo Donkwa Afro Addo, has ordered the swift closure of it. And in a related creepy story, um, a traditional council has threatened to burn a house in a community under the traditional council after the premises were alleg allegedly hosted um, LGBTQ community members who were planning this office. So it had a brief life. And they had a, you know, debut and a launch with a lot of festivities, an Australian um, diplomat went, and so anyway. And then in Australia, there's that other current controversy about what's her name and naming a stadium Margaret after Court. her. Margaret Court. Margaret Court. That's old news. No, they're still arguing about I it. Know, I it's old, know, but it's old news. She's old news. Yeah, she's yeah. a... Although I heard that, you know, um, Mary Johns, who's uh, the editor of Queer Over 40, who is Australian, said she's the best tennis player in the world, Margaret Court. Oh, she is not. <laughs> well, she's a homophobe that much, we she know. She is not. Um, more bad news. Well, I don't know, <laughs> depending on how you look at it. An international court finds that Jamaica violated the rights of gays. Mm -hmm. um, and they've been reprimanded. By who? Whether or not they'll buy the international um, community. 
No, no, no. <laughs> I've got it for you. The Inter-American Commission on Human Rights. Uh, they told them they had to have same-sex marriage. They didn't, and who knows whether or not they will. Uh -huh. Still um, not going. They're, they're, no kidding. And, you know, there are a lot of places I'm not going in that neighborhood. You know what I learned that I never knew, speaking of territories, is that, that what's her name from, the woman from the um, Virgin, uh, American Virgin Islands? Who was who talked at the um, impeachment hearing? Oh, Plasky, yeah. representative. But I never realized that people had us. They were actually went to Congress. They weren't representatives, but they they're non-voting members. Yeah, I didn't. I never knew that. They're considered a territory. Yeah. Well, let me add, uh, Jamaica is one of nine nations across the Caribbean that still have laws prohibiting consensual same-sex intimacy. These include Barbados, Dominica, Grenada, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, and the Grenadines. St. Kitts and Nevis, Nevis, and Antigua and Barbuda. You know, LGBT people flock to these homophobic countries. The and, and a lot of, uh, you know, they go there on cruises all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's not only Jamaica. No. It's a bad um, area of the world. Korean same-sex couple to sue the National Health Insurance Agency for equal rights. They have no gay marriage in Korea. Um, I mentioned last time that they have a new family law to encourage families, Absolutely. except for LGBTQ families. Um, so you could either get health insurance like a lot of places through um, your employment or through dependency if a family member has insurance through work. And so this man filed for insurance through his partner's workplace, was granted it, and then they erased it for no reason. They have no, so they're, that's being appealed. Um, now I have a picture of activists who are suing Honduras over the new marriage equality super ban. Let me show you the photo. From the left are lawyers Astrid Ramos, Indira Mendoza Aguilar, and Nadia Meja, Mejia. And they're standing outside the Honduras Constitutional Court because remember I mentioned they you know started an initiative that passed that according to which 75 percent of the legislative body had to approve same-sex marriage instead of two-thirds it had to approve a same-sex marriage amendment making you know in a gesture to block it so these activists are saying it's an unconstitutional move, and I hope they succeed. Um, another picture before you is of LGBTQ activists in Myanmar. They joined the protests against the military coup, and this is a very flamboyant picture. A lot of drag queens are um, joining the protest, at least 100 um, LGBTQ activists have been participating uh, in these actions. And the picture before you is of Mandalay, where uh, the activists are protesting. Uh, as we may not be surprised to learn, consensual same-sex relations remain criminalized in Myanmar under Section 377 of the criminal code. Um, nevertheless, in a gesture of great courage and visibility, a uh, group of LGBT activists are participating in the widespread protests there. We recall there was a coup a few weeks ago yes. when Aung San Suu Kyi has been imprisoned. Um, this is another headline that you know, doesn't really bear much more Conversation, LGBTQ veterans in the UK who had their medals 
removed or confiscated when they were ejected from the military can now apply to have them returned. Mm. A little late, but something. An uh, apology would be good. I think that there has been one. There yeah. has. Um, Tunisia. Um, LGBT people and youth are in the popular suburbs are targeted by repression. And if we have time, I'll talk a little more about that. And on the popular culture front, Adam Rippon, the figure skater, has gotten engaged. And I have now a picture, he's 31. He has gotten engaged to a Finnish person named Yusi Pekka Kajala. He calls him JP. And uh, there's a picture there they are at the GLAD Awards. Um, they've had a wonderful romance, hampered by the pandemic because they've been in di on different continents. But now they're, Ripon went to visit him in Finland and they decided to have rings and get mm. engaged. Um, okay. One more popular note, I have a film clip to show you about No Hard Feelings, a German film that is available on Amazon Pride and Apple Plus. So those are my headlines. Now let's go to Keith. Yes. Are you showing is the it? clip now or later? No, no, later. Oh, okay. I have a plot summary to <laughs> proceed it. She's not done. No, no. Okay, Vermont politics. I'm shocked. We have reported on the Older Vermonters Act where we provided, where testimony was provided saying you cannot use generalized terms saying all Vermonters, you need to include racial, ethnic, and social groups such as LGBTQ+, because if you don't, we get excluded. <coughs> well, that became Act 156 the Older Vermonters Act, and I think we qualify. <laughs> Keep in mind, starting Monday, over 65 can sign up yes. for COVID vaccinations. Are you on it? The Agency of Administration, Department of Disabilities, Aging and Independent Living, and the Vermont Department of Health are seeking feedback, and Zach should have the posting up, asking for us to comment on what needs to be included in the development of a Vermont Action Plan for Aging Well. What do they need to hear from us to write a plan that includes us? And we have until Friday, March 5th at 4 in the afternoon, close of business day, to put our comments in. And I know Ann will want to comment. Yes. Also, <laughs> The Vermont legislature, this was something that they had started on last year, and because of COVID, it didn't happen. It has been reintroduced, issuing an apology for the eugenics movement that occurred in Vermont in the 1930s. And it is looking at saying, you know, we were wrong, and we did things to your lives, and it's not okay. And this was the comment from Chief Don Stevens of the Abenaki tribe. You have to at least acknowledge that there's a wound, there's a wound there before it can heal. So this is a first step. But associated with that is also H96. And this is a bill that would create a Truth and Reconciliation Commission Development Task Force. And what it's looking at are what are the groups and who do we go, need to go out and talk to about what has been the impact and what is needed in the process of dismantling institutional structure and systemic discrimination in Vermont, both past and present. These two initiatives are before the House Committee on Housing, General, and Military Affairs, for which John Kalaki may be one of the members, mm -hmm. they're taking this bill, both of these components up as we speak. Mm -hmm. And it looks as though they're hoping to have these out by the end of this week, which means they may make it to cross over for the Senate to take up and consider. The other bill that is getting 
fast action is H128, and this is the bill that Taylor Small is one of the sponsors. House Judiciary, and this bill would essentially put a ban on the use of trans or gay panic defense in a criminal case. And there are pro proposed amendments that were not available prior to the, the taping today, but the conversation is that they want to strengthen the language, that there was an aspect saying that if a criminal act was the result of a romantic overture that you couldn't use this defense in it. And they, the Vermont Network Against Domestic and Sexual Violence said your language is vague. It's not talking about who's making the advance, what is being disclosed. Right. So, And the other was the bill asked for the criminal division of the Office of Attorney General to issue an annual report on you know, when people have tried to use this, the incidence of bias and hate motivated crimes, and what the Office of Attorney General and then the state's attorneys both presented in testimony is the Attorney General's office isn't the people who are prosecuting these cases, it's the state's attorney. You're asking the wrong people to issue the report, so they're looking at cleaning that up. And also there's a consideration of a committee bill to go back and look at the original bias, hate motivated crime bills, and there were two of them, and remove the word maliciously intended, removing maliciously because that's the standard by which- And how can you prove you, that? <laughs> well, th that you really wouldn't be able to use the bill. Right. But, and of note, you know, the um, Network Against Domestic and Sexual Violence, the state's attorneys, the Vermont Human Rights Commission, the Office of Attorney General, all testified in favor of this bill. The only one opposing it is the Office of Defender General. Mm. They represent the people who would not be able to use this defense. They're the people who are looking at representing the alleged perpetrator. Mm -hmm. And their argument is, you're removing something that may be critical to our case to which the response back from everyone else was there was a U.S. Supreme Court decision that says states get to determine what is or is not considered pertinent and admissible. This is in keeping with that U.S. support decision. Good. So, and really quickly because in Vermont, we are looking at trying to provide a gender X option on the documents of the state of Vermont issues in its official capacity. Well, we're not alone in this, it seems, because there's a real good chance that you could get a gender X option on your passport, your mm. social security cards, and other identification issued by the federal government in a proposal that is currently being worked out by both the Biden administration and the ACLU. All right, wow. that'd be so. very impressive. So back to very you. Very impressive. Well, we're gonna go to Puerto Rico. Again? Mm -hmm. The island's governor issued an executive order on January 24th, declaring a state of emergency over gender violence. Activists are happy about this declaration, but only meaningful change, they say, will be a shift on a social, societal level. The U.S. territory had 60 femicides, a 62% increase over the year before. The state of emergency will direct resources to government agencies to combat <coughs> violence directed at women and girls and the LGBT community. The order includes the appointment of a new government representative to oversee the agency and a phone app to report emergency situations. And that also includes public awareness campaign over gender violence. So this is good news from Puerto Rico. Terrible stuff that's happening yeah. in Puerto Rico. At least they're trying to address it in some ways, which is really if, good. If you don't name it, you can't do anything about it. And locals protest a Rush Limbaugh tribute on a historic gay-friendly theater. 
Did you read the in Florida where they tried to he the governor tried to half mass for the for Rush uh -huh. DeSantos? Anyway, okay. He succeeded, right? I think some people refused to do it, but I know he he would, he asked it to be done. Legislators but, supposed to. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Fresno residents have been protesting the sale of a th the sale of a theater to a conservative church for weeks. The conservative church is trying to buy this gay-friendly theater, and they are under fire after a tribute to Limbaugh was posted on the marquee this week. Locals remember Limbaugh is a hateful man who mocked gay and trans people and celebrated the deaths of those who died of AIDS. So, um, what a guy. Mm. And as we said, the um, Equality Act is being reintroduced in the House. <clears throat> and <clears throat> the act would ban anti-LGBT discrimination throughout the nation. <clears throat> the act would amend existing civil rights laws to ban discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender identity. It would also make clear that the Religious Freedom Act of 1994 does not provide legal cover for anti-LGBTQ discrimination. So, so now sad. you think its chances are diminished? They're not very good, no. Well, chances in the House are excellent. The Senate, they are still going back and looking for what do we have for votes. Susan Collins, about face, has diminished. Well, yeah, it means that people need to scramble to see who else is in support to ensure that they meet that 60 threshold. Well, I know. Mm. So we'll see. And it can't be an executive order. It has to be a, okay. Homophobes are more likely to be stupid. This is according to science reported in Pink News. There is a science, science, though. I mean, you know. There is a scientific link between cognitive intelligence and being homophobic. Researchers at Queensland, Australia, drew correlation between those who record a low intelligence score and those who express bigoted and prejudiced views. Intelligence score like IQ? Yeah. So anyway for those interested in vaguely, <laughs> vaguely important um, facts uh, yeah. or speculations. speculations, I don't know, yeah. you know. or whatever. Bill designed to curtail the rights of transgender people have been filed in state houses across the country, including Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi, South Carolina, and Tennessee. Many of these proposed laws seek to restrict female transgender students and athletes from competing in girls' sports, a new front in the conservative battle against the LGBT community. Although movements against the transgender community exist nationwide, like many conservative causes, it has been pushed more aggressively in the South. It's a familiar strategy. These bills get rolled out in a most concentrated way in states where they often have the greatest risk of passage. So, um, <clears throat> I, I think it was 31 bills in 26 states. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And people were seeing a very concerted effort with the conservative right in the development of language and strategies. And remember, it was, it was the PSYOF that gave us the bathroom bill. Yeah. Um, and Joe Biden, you know, he signed, he signed the executive order about the ban on transgender people serving openly in the military. Um, and most of these bills are being written with the support of conservative organizations like Eagle Foundation, the Heritage Foundation, and the Alliance Defending Freedom. With the Southern Poverty Law Center has design, designated as hate groups. So um, in um, Alabama, they're working to pass two identical bills that would make it illegal for doctors to perform medical procedures or prescribe drugs such as puberty blockers to minors. 
So if you have any interest in this, um, you know, there's lots of information out there, and um, there are quite a few states pushing this, so. I read an article that said, and we talked about this last time, too, because um, this has been going on for a while. Right. Yep. Um, well, they just reinvent the wheel, you know, over and over again. That suggested that part of this is a response to Biden's executive right. orders. Right. Uh, and also that it's the last vulnerable population. Group. And because of the Bostock U.S. Supreme Court decision. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. So here we go. And Ann, yes, you're I, up. I have three matters to discuss. Okay. One of them, maybe I'll start with the the uh, article that I missed in the headlines, but that is of some note. Finland reprimand, I might have mentioned it, but I'd like to talk a little more detail about it. The UN Committee on the Rights of the Child found that Finland failed to consider the best interests of the child of a lesbian couple when they rejected his asylum request. Um, and so his lesbian parents had no choice but to return to Russia. And he had been bullied in Russia. Um, and Finland did this? Finland rejected it, and they knew mm. all of this. Um, uh, he got to Finland with his mothers, and he had a happy life. He was well-adjusted, and now he's 11. Um, he'd, they'd flood Russia after the family faced harassment and threats, and he'd started to suffer from bullying and isolation at school. These were years when regions across wow. Russia had started to introduce so-called propaganda laws, which, of course, um, have come, have, you know, have grown in virulence, and so. Finland did it wrong, and um, this UN Committee on Rights of the Child says they need to make it right. They need to um, compensate. Will they? Oh, sure. And, you know, let the lesbian parents back. But will they let him back, do you think? Is oh, yeah. yeah. They'll okay. welcome him back. Okay. Because they screwed up. Yeah, okay. So Good, that's good then. Yeah. I'm surprised, though. I'm surprised, too, yeah. Because they knew all mm -hmm. about it. Um, let me talk at length now about the homophobic hate speech on the rise in Europe. Um, this annual report was published on February 16th, and a lot of it comes from the top. Politicians in 17 countries in Europe and Central Asia have verbally attacked LGBT people over the last year. Of course, guess what country was Poland. top of the list? <laughs> Poland, um, where they talk about the, you know, officials criticizing the LGBTQ ideology. Free zones. Mm -hmm. um, it also singled out Hungary, wow. where transgender people last year were banned from legally changing gender. However, the situation of LGBT people in Bulgaria and Romania. Um, could worsen this year, they warned, while in Turkey, ruling party politicians have repeatedly attacked LGBT people. Mm. Uh, the trend of politicians verbally attacking LGBT people has also been on the rise in countries such as Albania, Azerbaijan, Bosnia-Herzegovina, Kosovo, Moldova, North Macedonia, and Russia. In Belarus and Ukraine, this is kind of sweeping, isn't it? Mm -hmm. In Belarus and Ukraine, some religious leaders have blamed LGBT people for the coronavirus. Oh, Hate speech on social media has grown in Montenegro. Do they know Marjorie? <laughs> no kidding. Russia and Turkey in traditional media in Ukraine and is ongoing in Georgia, North Macedon Macedonia, and Romania. In Central Asia, LGBT rights are stagnating or backsliding in Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan. In Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, and Turkmenistan, 
we see windows of opportunity for advancing LGBT <laughs> rights. So there's a ray of hope, dim though it may be. The group said that the pandemic has caused difficulties for LGBT people at home with their homophobic families um, and has given openings to politicians to um, attack gay people because they're trying to shift attention from economic problems, and that's a tried and true strategy. Yep. LGBTQ communities are amongst the groups that get scapegoated in particular, the report said. So uh, I have one more clip. Quick, yes, and let me tell you about a little bit about this uh, clip that you're going to see. It looks like a really interesting um, film. Parvis, the son of exiled Iranians, copes with life in his hometown, which is a small hometown, by indulging himself with pop culture, grinder dates, and raves. After being caught shoplifting, he's sentenced to community service at a refugee shelter where he meets siblings Banashvach and Eamon, who have fled Iran. Now, guess what happens here? Uh, their brother and sister. As romantic attraction between Parvis and Amaman grows, the fragile relationship of the three is put to the test. They find and lose each other throughout a summer of fleeting youth, an intense first love, an attempt at, joint, at a joint future, as well as the stark realization that in Germany, they are not equal. So take a look at No Hard Feelings. P-A-R-V-I-S. 120 Sozialstunden, richtig? Mhm. Das Ganze hier ist eine ehemalige Schule, wurde uns für das Wohnprojekt zur Verfügung gestellt. Das war das erste Mal, dass ich was mit jemandem wie dir hatte. Ja, eigentlich stehe ich gar nicht so auf Ausländer. Arabi? Na, Iraniasta. Mein Jaziadim. Hast <laughs> احساس میکنم زندگیم دو قسمت شده اون آدمی که میتونستم باشم و اون آدمی که امروز هستم That looks very interesting. Yeah. And it's on Amazon Prime. I was going to say you. Amazon Prime. And Apple TV. So we have a trial subscription oh, to Amazon yeah. Prime. We better get to that because it's over in March. And we better get yeah. out before we start having to pay. But it's anyway, if March you. March is next week. Yeah. March 30th. March 30th, oh. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so if you get Amazon Prime or Apple Plus, check it out. It seems pretty interesting. I think I have Apple Plus. Well, there we go. All right. So we have some time, Keith, uh, to talk the, about your trivia. Or? Oh, I know. Any Keith? other recaps you want to <laughs> share? Well, I, I'll look for the, we'll all look for the recaps. He brought us into the black experience by inviting us in and engaging us with revelations. And, Jack, and Zach's going to show a picture and cry 
Zach's, Zach's going to show another picture. Who was this? And, and he truly was just the sweetest person. This was Alden Ailey. Uh-huh. Yeah. She named it Afro-American and defined the hierarchies of oppression. She was a revolutionary who challenged us with these words. I write for those women who do not speak, for those who do not have a voice because they were so terrified, because we were taught to respect fear more than ourselves. We've been taught that silence would save us, but it won't. And it was? Audre Lord. I was counting on you to get that one. <laughs> but yeah. I mean, it, it was interesting reflecting on Black History Month some of the, 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 the truly amazing artistic contributions and how they're not really named for what they were. They're not really taught or shared within our culture. And when you stumble, stumble across them, you sort of go, what? Alvin Ailey, the, you know, he, he's this incredibly sweet man. They came on tour to the Barry Opera House. Oh. So. Early on? No, it, they were well established by the time they came on tour, but I, I remember looking at the listing for who was coming into the Opera House and they were looking at expanding. And they had been at the Flynn in Burlington, but it's like, I'm going to bury Vermont <laughs> to see Revelations, which is this incredible celebration. This was in, I want to say mid-90s. Mm -hmm. well, I saw Audre Lorde. I saw Audre Lorde, too. <laughs> yeah, in Boston. I saw her Ooh, several, yeah. you know, and her, you know, take from this what you can use, she used to say. Yeah. And your silence will not, I mean, she's so quotable. Your silence will not protect you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And I thought of that when you read your quotation. We had early days quotation. of anti-discrimination equality work here in Vermont, we had buttons, you know. Silence is the voice of complicity. Your silence will not protect you. Yeah. Mm -mm. And the master's tool will never dismantle the master's house. Yeah. I was at the um, <laughs> Women's March in New York a few years ago, and somebody had that on a, on a placard. And I said, oh, Audrey Lord. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have to explain to people who, yeah. No, she, not the person who was holding the sign. <laughs> she yeah. knew. <laughs> yeah. All righty. All righty. Well, on that note, um, let's hope for this bill that it gets through by the next time we're on. Um, and don't forget to tune in to the interview show next week. We yeah. have a great lineup for you. And um, we will see you in a few weeks. In the meantime... Resist. Resist.